Hi, I'm going to do a presentation on little ring plovers as if I was talking to a camera club or an RSPB group or bird watching society. This is inspired by the fact I've just read that the Ashbourne Camera Club during the coronavirus lockdown organised a talk by Paul Hobson using the Zoom video conferencing software and I thought that was remarkable. First of all a great bit of organisation from the camera club and I'd imagine took a bit of guts from Paul to do it. I, I might have turned it down. Public speaking is one of the biggest human phobias and for those of you that don't like doing it I can tell you that something a bit strange. It's easier to talk to a very large audience 200-300 people in a proper auditorium with the sloping seats than it is to talk to a small group, maybe half a dozen people, in a huge empty church hall. With a big group you get feedback, you get an atmosphere and I think it helps you to raise your game as a speaker. In a big empty room with just a handful of people it falls a bit flat somehow. Doing it by video conferencing, I could imagine very difficult, not getting any feedback at all, not knowing whether your audience has got up and gone to make a cup of tea. Anyway, apparently it worked quite well, so I'm going to have a go at doing a, a sort of online presentation. We'll start off with this picture of a little littering plover in a field in Warwickshire. It's on the estate where I do most of my photography. It's a huge estate, 25,000 acres. And this particular field is the centerpiece of the estate. It's the most bird-rich habitat they've got. In this one field, there are six stretches of water. Five of them very small. One of them you'd call a small lake. And unfortunately, in recent years, the dam has been leaking. So there's not been much water in the lake itself. But it made it a perfect habitat for little wing plovers because we've now got a muddy bottom dried out and the grass has just started to grow th through on it. So early in the spring, a few years back, they started to display there. They fly around in a circle, calling, and they fly quite low, round and round what could be their territory. And I watched them for a few hours through the binoculars and I made a note of where they were landing and then eventually went and put up a hide. Not your traditional hide, but a low down hide, a lie down hide. They've got a number of advantages. First of all, you get that low angle picture that most wildlife photographers like to get. And it also intimidates the birds far less than a normal hide. The lower you can keep the hide and smaller, the less it intimidates the wildlife. It's a bit like us with a dog. Which are you more frightened of, a big dog or, or a little dog? The smaller, the better. So I picked a spot that was very photogenic where the water's just uh, lapping up on, onto the mud and uh, had a little go at the photography. There's scrimming on the front of the hide, you can see the tripod leg just sticking out. I always say that if I'm lying down on the floor, I can lie there for about two hours. If I, and if I cover myself with scrimming, it's amazing how close wildlife would come to you just lying there without a hide. But after about two hours, your back is killing you and your neck as well, because your neck is craning upwards. But if you're in a hide like this, you don't have to keep still. You can turn over and have a rest from time to time. So perhaps once an hour, you can turn onto your back. You can't take pictures, but you can, you can have a rest for 10 minutes and then get back into position. So I find in a lie down hide, I can stay in position for, for far longer, maybe three or four hours. The only thing you have to watch is you must empty your bladder before you get into the hide because lying on a full bladder is quite uncomfortable. But you do get these lovely low angle shots and I, I took quite a few pictures and then I noticed that every now and then the birds were landing um, maybe for 30 seconds, maybe for five minutes but then they were taking off and they were flying towards the hide and this was simply because the wind was blowing from the hide to the birds and when birds take off they like to take off into the wind so it was actually perfect for flight photography they were coming straight at me so they had to land in a certain spot and uh, with my Olympus camera I make good use of the custom settings on there so custom setting 4 I have saved for the pro capture settings. This is where you have the ability to take a picture before you press the button. Fantastic uh, bit of kit. So I was just taking 
pictures and as soon as a bird would land in the right place and I could see there was a chance for the flight shot I also got to do is change the setting on the top of the camera to C4 and I'm all set up ready to go for pro capture. I would then manually focus and you've only got to pull the focusing ring backwards in order to be able to manually focus with that camera again very quick to do and I have peaking active peaking is when the area that's in focus goes red because what I want to do is focus about two meters in front of the bird and then when the bird takes off and it comes towards me at some point he's going to come through the focusing point and hopefully I'm going to get a sharp picture and it's much easier to judge where you are focused two meters in front of the bird if it goes red on the floor. I believe if I was there for three to four hours I only had three opportunities to do this three times and the bird landed in the right spot and then flew towards me and I only kept one of that sequence of three. So this is it the bird has just launched and um, the nice thing about Pro Capture is you don't have to hit the button until after it's happened. I'm taking 60 frames per second and the camera is recording pictures, sorry the camera is, is uh, just writing pictures to a buffer so it keeps 35 pictures in a buffer, it doesn't write them to the memory card and then after the bird has gone through the point of focus I then press the button fully and the 35 pictures in the buffer prior to me pressing the button are now written to the memory card. So it's a marvellous system, but that picture is not quite sharp. And the next one is a little sharper. And we're almost there. And that's it. That is the sharpest of, of the pictures coming towards me. And after that, it starts to go slightly out of focus now. It's come through the focusing point. So if we go back to that picture. I have had to crop it slightly, not very much, that's the that's the original and that's the crop version and I was very pleased with that. I love Pro Capture, always looking for the opportunity to use it. But it's a very typical little wing plover display, they fly low uh, across the ground like this calling as they go and they go right around in a circle and come back and sometimes land again otherwise they do the circuit two or three times. On the same estate, but probably about a mile away, we have another couple of uh, stretches of water. We call them scrapes because they're not very deep, very shallow water. And um, we have a permanent wooden hide set up there, a small hide, a photographer's hide. And uh, I was sitting in there the one day, didn't know there was little ring plovers about. I hadn't been down there for a while, just got in the hide to see what was happening. And the birds came right up to the hide and started to display right in front of the hide and here it's doing its sort of nest scraping. There isn't a nest there at the moment but they were clearly intending to nest there. So the bird sort of bows down like this and then scrapes. It's the male that does this mostly, he's trying to encourage the female. This is where we should build a nest and lay our eggs. Other species of waders do this as well, lapwings is the most noticeable and then starting to fan the tail and I love hide photography when you're sitting in a hide you see things you're never going to see walking about in the countryside and then we had uh, both birds came in together spreading the wings and tail I think this is the, the male on the top I don't think there's a real difference between male and female little ring plover but you can see that the, the upper bird is darker around the head and uh, usually with every species, even Canada geese which are identical, you can tell the male from the female he looks more butch or strong, more strongly marked somehow. So that will be the male up on the top. You do have to start thinking about the licensing situation here. This is a Schedule 1 species. There isn't a nest as such, but they clearly are going to nest there. Of course, the only way I'm going to disturb the bird 
is by getting out of the hide and that is what the law actually says it's not that you can't photograph a schedule one species around the nest it says you can't disturb them doing so anyway I when I got out of the hide um, I didn't go back until I got a license I applied for a license and it would have come two or three weeks later and they didn't actually nest there in the end or if they did it was predated because when I finally went back there was no sign of a nest on the same estate but probably about a mile away there's another couple of scrapes here the one on the right we can see but over on the left hand side behind the hide you'll see another stretch of water they're very shallow lakes so we call them scrapes and uh, <clears throat> during the summer the water level drops right down and leaves a, a muddy edge around here where birds like the little wind plover can, can nest here too notice the hide has got the the panel at the top here where you can photograph out of but also there's a lower panel which I can remove that and then I can be lying down and photographing at, at ground level so this is the hide that I photographed those little wind plovers from but at a different time when the water level was, was lower moving on to the left hand scrape later on in the year when the water level was very low we've got more nesting little wind plovers and this time I have got a license and you can see two eggs just underneath the bird they might look like a couple of stones but that's the eggs and this is that lovely low angle shot that you get very easy to birds to do on the nest little wind plovers they are very obliging you get in the high they come back within 10 20 seconds they can be back on the, on the eggs I do like the, the low angle shot, it makes the bird look more dramatic, it throws the background out of focus. And just before they lay the eggs, this is uh, doing a bit of displaying. Little wind plovers do this military like goose step. They lift the legs right up in the air, well the male does. As he goes around displaying and you see he sticks his chest right out as well but a uh, fairly slow shutter speed here so the leg is blurred but he's trying to be as impressive as possible and of course eventually that leads to the mating I'll just finish off with some pictures taken with a wide angle system this is actually a GoPro camera which is one of those little action cameras that push bike uh, owners have on their helmets when they go off cycling a uh, tiny little thing 100% silent you don't have to worry about remote control with it you just leave it running set it up to take two frames per second and it will run for about two hours before the battery goes flat and it's such a small little camera that the birds take absolutely no notice of it and come back to the eggs very very quickly it's just nice to get wide angle shots showing the birds in the habitat and that's it my presentation on little wing plovers